Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a grammar school. Why does nothing last on thin nails? And most importantly, how can we fix that? Stay tuned and let's get right into it. Look at these nails. They seem normal at first glance, but if we get closer and press on the free edge, we will see how thin and fragile it is. The nail surface is red. My model has removed her coating the wrong way. She simply has overfiled some of the nail areas. So, no coating is going to last on such damaged nails. Our task is to find a technique that is going to fix this issue. I'm going to show you one that suits 90% of clients. And that is nail extension using a hard material. It's not just a regular gel. This material has a range of properties that make it last longer even on thin nails. I start off by preparing the nails with a 180-240 grit nail file. I'm going to use the soft side to lift the nail scales. It's not the only reason why no coating lasts on the nails. Another one is over filing them with a coarse nail file. They become so thin and red that nothing lasts on them. There is one more cause of lifting on the sides, and that is skipping those areas while filing the nails. So they stay naturally smooth, glossy and oily, which is bound to result in lifting on the sides. So always make sure to file them properly. My model suffers from hyperhidrosis, so I'm going to use some talcum powder to dry her skin a little so that I could do a clean manicure. The lunula is white, so there is no deep nail fault covering it. So I should be careful. I'm using a flame tornado drill bit. It's not going to heat the skin up, so I can remove the pterygium. There are many hangnails on the lateral folds due to hyperhidrosis. My model has a bad habit of picking them, and I can't blame her. Hangnails are too annoying to put up with but we should always inform our clients that picking them won't do any good. They can either cut them with scissors or nippers or carefully file. Picking can only result in further skin damage. Not only does the process hurt, but it can also bring about inflammation caused by bacteria. I finish it off by polishing the cuticle with a rounded cylinder drill bit. Runeil sent me their new products. I received a big box containing their new UV lamps. The first one comes with a rubber hand rest and is enhanced with multiple LED lights. It has a removable bottom, as well as timer settings and a little screen. There is also a low heat mode. This is a cool gadget made of top quality plastic. The next item is another 48 watt lamp but this one can cure two hands simultaneously. It comes with a touchscreen instead of buttons. The bottom is removable. Most importantly, there are safe pink UV lights. The buttons on the right lamp are on the nail technician's side. On the left one, the touchscreen is on top. If you have a hand rest, it may be inconvenient to press on the buttons. It's way more convenient having control buttons on a nail technician's side. The one on the left glows pink, the one on the right glows purple. But their power and efficiency characteristics are the same. Now, this is the material I wanted to tell you about. It's a new gel expert line by Runeil. It can be found exclusively on their website. The gels came with a catalog describing their properties and specifications. These are adaptive gels. They are plastic when applied thinly, but with thicker application they tend to get harder. They are the hardest when used for nail extensions. That's what I will do to secure the free edge, but I'm going to keep it thin in the cuticle zone to prevent lifting. This line also includes nail files, brushes and UV lamps. There are 14 camouflage gels and a clear one. There is a white pot for the clear gel and dusty rose ones for camouflage gels. 
This set also includes nail files of different grit and a professional two-sided brush. This paddle-shaped side is perfect for gel application. And this thin and short brush can be used for alignment and hard-to-reach areas. These gels come in 15 gram and 50 gram formats. There is a huge variety of colors, from milky white to pink, peachy and nude. Let's take a closer look at their texture and plasticity. It's a medium-thick and self-aligning material. It's perfect for strengthening natural nails and nail alignment without filing. It's my favorite gel consistency due to its aligning properties. There is no need to touch up the cuticle zone with this one. Look at this vibrant pink color. But once applied, such shades get toned down a little bit. This clear one has a purple undertone, so it's not going to turn yellow after polymerization. Now let's do a quick plasticity test. I put some gel on a palette pad and smear it with a brush. I keep it thicker on the left as used for extensions and keep the right side thin to reveal its plasticity. I send it to cure for one minute. I remove the tacky residue and let the gel cool down a little to point out its properties. Let's see if it has cured. Now let's try to bend it. The thicker side is too hard to bend. And the thin one is rather plastic. These are the exact gel properties that we need today. I can break it by applying more pressure, which is a property of hard gels. Let's move on to the most important part – nail sculpting. Do you like my videos and want to learn more? Join us online and get access to Sacramel's knowledge base. More than 20 video courses for the price of one, including a certificate. Our courses are available worldwide. Read the description for details. I'm going to use a dehydrator to dry the nail surface. It will absorb excess moisture. I can't do without a primer. I cover up the nail plate with three brush strokes. There are different types of primers. We can use an acidic primer to get a long-lasting coating, but I'm going to use an adhesive base coat instead. It lasts long, so it's one of my personal favorites. I rub it on with a flat brush. Cure it in the lamp. Now let's get the forms ready. I separate them, remove the tabs and try them on the nails. There is a huge gap between the form and the gross channel, so I need to cut it out in the center. You may be wondering why I'm using paper forms. Why not use dual forms or gel tips? I want to clip these nails to slim them down. I also want them to be clean underneath so as not to file the axis out. I mark the gross channel with cuts and put the form on. I squeeze it around the nail to form a perfect C-curve. Using some gel in a shade 103, I sculpt the tips. I shape them square. The layer is nice and thin and easy to align. We can touch it up with a thin brush. Now send it to cure. It's time for the main sculpting layer. I cover up the nail plate with gel. Then I grab some more for sculpting. I put it on the apex and align it. I leave a gap near the nail fold to get a smooth transition between the layers. I tilt the finger down and stretch the gel out. It aligns perfectly. So I quickly turn the nail over, touch it up and cure. We could turn it over for a few more seconds right before curing. When it gets warmer, we can clip the tip of the nail. I will be using a C-curve clip. By the way, we're not supposed to put them higher than the free edge to prevent lateral onycholysis or a lateral nail separation. Done with sculpting. Now we can file the nails. I'm filing a sharp square shape. The free edge is perpendicular to the central axis when viewed from the top. What do you think is the best nail shape for this model? We've chosen a square one. 
Should it have been an almond shape? Let me know what you think. I barely touched the cuticle zone since it's already perfect. I smooth the surface out with long moves. I love this beautiful and natural looking C-curve and thin nail tips. Don't worry, they're still going to last long. To learn more about nail sculpting, join our online nail extension course. I will teach you how to sculpt and strengthen thin nails. Please contact us on social media to learn more about the course. We decided to spice it all up with stamping. It's a hound's tooth pattern. Different for each hand. It will be black on this hand and white on the other one. I want to know which one you like better. I'm using new stamping polish. You can check it out in my Wildberries haul soon. I wait for it to dry and top it off. Now let's remove leftover polish. It turns out that this polish is thick and hard to remove. I wish I had used a skin defender that would have protected the skin around the nails. But it's all clean now. Here's a final look. I think this nail art matches my model's look perfectly. Let's sum it up. In order to see how the nails lasted, we have to do a nail fill. If you want me to film part 2, please give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below. Wishing you all beautiful nails. Good luck! Bye-bye!